Hi everyone, uh, this video we're going to look at the differences between groups and frames. Um, up until now in this course it's been pretty basic right like the type tool does what you imagine the rectangle tool does what you imagine like it's not rocket science ready for this video to be rocket sciencey uh, I introduced it earlier in the course because it was probably the hardest thing I had to get used to um, coming to Figma so I'll introduce it a little bit now and a little bit later on a little bit more and you know towards the end you will become master of frames but if you get to the end of this video and you're like oh i kind of get it but i don't kind of get it don't worry i'm introducing it early so that we can revisit it a few times all right first let's understand groups let's draw a bunch of shapes up here so we're going to grab we'll do rectangle tool okay we'll do three shapes let's look at the polygon tool okay give them roughly you don't need to be the right size they can be three circles i'm doing these because I don't know, it looks good. So make three of something, okay? And what you'll see here on this product details frame, okay, is my ellipse, my polygon, and my rectangle. I can select them all and I can right click them and group them, or the really common Command G on a Mac, Control G on a PC. And they're grouped. You're like, great. What happens? Over here, can you see the icon has changed? Okay, it's called Group 2. Where is a group? There must be a group somewhere else. I made a group earlier, didn't I? There it is, it's their button. So group two, I can rename. So this could be my icons. Great. This little icon here is not important, but you'll get used to these shapes. So that there, the little dotted line is a group. So I can look around, look, there's another group. And I can look inside the group of my layers. See this little turn down arrow here. So yeah, you can see stuff inside of it. You can say, all right, I want to move. The like, grouping is useful because we know what grouping is. You can grab them and they move together. Okay, but I can go into them individually by either clicking them here in the layers panel and going, okay, this needs to be a bit further this way. Or we can kind of go into that object editing mode. So let's double click on the background, click on it once, double click, we kind of go inside of it, inside of the group and we can operate, you know, work on it, double click it to come out. And it's still a nice helpful group. You can ungroup by right clicking it and going to ungroup. Okay, and then it kind of comes out of that dotted group and it's back to being single units. I'm going to go back, Command-G or Control-G on a PC and group it. So what's the difference? Uh, let's make two versions. So I'm going to duplicate this fella and I'm going to right click it and say ungroup. So I got this grouped one. You can see him here, it's called grouped two. These guys here are just hanging out by themselves in this frame. So what we're going to do is very similar. I'm going to select them all. And instead of right clicking and saying group, we're going to frame selection. And it's basically exactly the same as a group except the icon's different. Can you see over here, there's my top one. Let's move the layer order so it makes more sense. There's my group, that's them there. There's my frame. The icon's different. You get this like little, um, what do you call it? Pound symbol, hash symbol, grid, whatever it is. Okay, but they do a lot of the same thing. So you can still see them in there. They're all still trapped inside of this nice frame. So what's the difference, Dan? Is the difference is that frame can survive on his own. The group, if I go into this group and say, you are gone, and you are gone. Remember, double clicking it to go inside the group. The group disappears by group, okay? If I undo that, because I want them back. The frame, on the other hand, if I go in, delete this guy, this one, you're left with a frame, which can be weird when you're new. You're like, what are all these empty frames everywhere? Because the frame can exist without the group. Why is this useful, Dan? Okay, it is useful because, I'm undoing, okay, is because I can do things like, let's say I want to cut that off, okay? I can drag my frame in, can you see it? It's it's operating differently. If I drag the edge of this, look what happens. Squidgy. If I drag the edge of this in, okay, I can do things like this, clip the content. So I can use the frame as kind of like a mask, okay, to kind of hide things, which is one thing. And actually, let me show you quickly. So this is why that's useful. You created a nice big list, okay, you can grab your frame, make it a bit smaller. I know we're jumping ahead in the course, but I guess I want to introduce frames a couple of times. So that's why it's good. You got this list and you can set this to scroll, okay, so that it kind of clips it off. Same with this. You got the stuff hanging over the edges here. I can say, where are you, frame? You can be over there. Then I can say clip contents. So I can use a scroll so people can scroll left and right, but clip off the edges. So that's one of the things. Let's jump back. All right, so clip contents is one of the reasons. And um, there are other ones. And the reason I show it to you here is that you're going to download somebody's free UI template and you're going to be like, why is everything frames? It's all a bit weird. I don't understand. That's That was my position anyway. So the reason people do do it, they get to an intermediate level or an advanced level in Figma and they just stop using groups, never. 
because Figma, um, sorry, Frames, is just like groups, but with bonus extra features. And clipping contents is one of them. Let's look at one of the other main ones, just to introduce it now, and we'll work on it at a bit more um, in depth later on. So what we can do is I'm gonna actually ungroup this. Weird thing about a frame is that you group it, so you group this top one, and then you ungroup it. You frame, you frame it, but then you ungroup it. Does that make sense? You ungroup works for both of these. So I'm gonna ungroup it, and you'll notice these guys just come out. I'm gonna put these kind of over here. I'm gonna grab my um, name here. Okay, and I'm gonna select all of these and turn them into a frame, not a group, because I wanna see the bonus. The bonus is, watch this, I can click on, double click to go inside our kind of object editing mode. I'm inside my um, frame, and I'm gonna say you stick to the top left of this frame that it's in. This frame is the thing around the outside, Okay, these guys though, I'm gonna click on you. Okay, and I'm gonna say, actually, you are gonna to go to the top, top right. Same with you, you can go to the top right. Same with you, top right. And you're like, what does that do? Watch this, if I go now and I'm gonna make a copy of it, and watch this, when I drag it, hey, it sticks to the top right of the frame. Groups can't do that. Okay, they call them constraints. We'll do them properly later on, but when it gets to things like, okay, I need another um, version, it needs to be tablet. Okay, so I'm gonna click on my frame tool, I'm gonna say, oh, it's gonna be a tablet mini. Okay, it's gonna be in portrait, I'm gonna stick it over here, I'm starting to design. So instead of trying to drag it all out and try and make it all line up, you can click on this guy and go, okay, you go over here, and I can get you in the top, and I can drag this over, and I can stick it to that side. Can you see the perk? It gets more and more in depth when you start kind of stacking things up and it means when you start adding text things start reflowing it gets not complicated gets more awesome that's what it does but that awesomeness comes at a kind of confusing stage because remember at the beginning of this course we dragged out frames remember the frame that was our mobile phone we just did it now again with the tablet okay so frames get used for the big thing around the outside but also the little things inside of it okay these little nested frames so i've got a frame inside of a frame weird if i bring in say maybe that icon we brought in earlier okay you probably didn't notice but if i go to um our place image okay and i bring in the same one or a different one watch what happens if i drag this out you'll notice that actually can you see it brought it in as a frame okay it's a frame inside of it is our little vector thing but it's inside of a frame so that's why we can't leave it to the end of the course because there'd be frames everywhere and you're like in this case, it doesn't matter. We're not using any sort of this goodness with constraints and variants and all sorts of cool stuff we're gonna do later on. It's just kind of like a group. That's all we're gonna use it for for this guy, but know that later on, there's some fancy stuff we can do. Ooh, ooh. So what you're trying to tell me, Dan, is groups bad? Nope, groups are great and they work just fine. And they just don't have all the extra um, fancy features. So that is my whole point of this video. And um, we're gonna use frames from now on instead of groups because they have features that we're gonna learn on, uh, learn later on uh, and they just appear lots in Figma. And I wondered why. The weird thing is when you've got uh, frames inside of another frame, weird. Why do you got frames inside of frames? And the one last thing is that this frame, why does this one have a name? How did you get that name there and this one doesn't have a name? Basically, if a frame is not nested, it has a name. What I mean by that is, see this frame here, got it selected. If I drag them over here, watch, his name appears inside, his name goes away. So that's kind of why you might ooh, uh, sometimes see a frame name and sometimes the frame is just used as like a group and it's inside of another frame. Wow, what a confusing video, Dan. Anyway, I, let's, I hope it got us closer to understanding frames versus groups. What we don't need is we don't need these particular examples that we made. Okay, we're gonna create some specific icons in a little bit. But yeah, we're moving towards understanding frames versus groups. Uh, so delete those and I will see you in the next video. All right, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, consider giving it a thumbs up-y likey thing and also consider subscribing to the channel. I've got lots more Figma tutorials here. Also, if you do wanna go further with Figma, I've got a full course called Figma Essentials. Uh, check out the card up here or link in the description. All right, bye for now.